at the Hazy Crawford Stadium in Trinidad and Tobago. A rivalry steeped in history as both teams warm up for their CONCACAF Nations matchups. Trinidad and Tobago take on Jamaica as Trinidad and Tobago gets ready to face Canada on March 23rd and Jamaica gets ready to face USA on March 21st. Looking at the weather today, it's a scorcher, 30 degrees Celsius. Humidity index 66% and wind speeds at 14 kilometers per hour. And while the weather graphic says that, we definitely need that water break during the game today. My name is Hans Devines. Joining me on the pitch, two men that can tell you about this rivalry, former Soko Warrior Brent Sancho and commentator James Saunders. Guys, what are we in for today? <laughs> it's good to look for Columbus time because it's going to be exploration for these teams. <laughs> They're going to be exploring each other, exploring players, exploring possibilities because both these teams, of course, are preparing for what's ahead. TNT, yeah. of course, are coming up against Canada in the play-in for the Copa America, while Jamaica, of course, the Nations League semi-final, that's ahead for them. They're going to be looking to supplement their squads, and this is what this fixture is about. Brent, when we talk about this fixture... Well, when you talk about this fixture, you can't put the word rivalry next to it because, as we all know, this is about being king of the Caribbeans. And for both countries, the bragging rights will always be there. Yes, there is a situation where players are trying to get themselves involved in the last uh, set of names that would be put forward to the Nation League games that they have. Yeah. However, there's rivalry, there's bragging rights attached to this, so I expect this game to have a little bit of tastiness in it. Well, James, let's talk about the last few times these two teams met each other. Yeah, it's, it's pretty close when you look on paper because uh, when you look at uh, the last three matches, Hal Hamgunson, his first few matches in Jamaica were against Trinidad and Tobago. He lost the first one, yeah. he drew the second one, but of course when it came down to where the cookie really crumbled, the crunch time, that's where Trinidad and Tobago fell woefully short, 4-1, so it might look even in terms of results, but that 4-1 is still going to be stinging Angus Eve's men because of course that knocked them out of the Gold Cup contention. Well, you spoke about Angus Eve and the men under him. Let's talk about the lineups today, Brent. Yeah, some interesting calls. And of course, a lot of players that have not been capped before. A Burns, a young player that played for AC Port of Spain, of, of, of course, doing exceptionally well. Kai Mo, someone that came in of, at the, the level at Club Sando. And, and of course, Chavez Hamilton, another player that plays at yeah. Club Sando. So it's always good to see young men who have done well throughout the league season now getting, of course, this situation where they can play an international fixture. So I think that is where Angus Eva picked the squad based on what he saw during the league. And that has always come up with uh, some of the players that we see in the starting lineup. James, your take on the players like Young Chavez. Yeah, you see, Shave, sorry. You see Shaves in uh, contention, of course, after a decent run in the under 20 qualifiers where he scored two goals. Uh, he's a young player that's promising. Uh, Angus Eve pinpointed three players from that under 20 squad that he likes, uh, particularly Shaves being one of them, Lindell Sweeney, who's injured as well, yeah. and of course, Rio Cardenas. Uh, so it's, a, it's an opportunity for them to take or grab hold of the opportunity at the senior level for Jamaica. When you look at their squad, 14 uncapped players yeah. in their 26 man squad. It wow. tells you how much, uh, you know, Halgumson has been criticized in the past for not using enough local players. Well, this is an opportunity that he's handed them in the lap and say, hey guys, I'm giving you an opportunity against your Caribbean rivals. Go out, impress me, and I'll see if you can make my score. All right, well, what can we expect today, guys, on the pitch? Well, I think for both coaches, they would want to see if uh, their both sets of charges will take the instructions that is handed out before the game. And of course, they would want to see some sort of chemistry and fluidity throughout the game and cohesion as well. That would be key. And then if you can do the extra stuff that you're good at, that would be great for them. Well, let's talk a little bit about the unlimited substitutions today as well. Well, of course, it's, it's when you come out closed door games, it's the sort of situations that you have. So I'm not surprised that that situation is being allowed. Well, you can follow all of the action of this matchup and so many others simply by downloading the Sportsmax app. When we come back, kick off here at the Hazel Crawford Stadium, Trinidad and Tobago versus Jamaica. That is pictures of Port George, a position used to defend this country back in the colonial era. Today, it will be the Hazley Crawford Stadium that Trinidad and Tobago will hope 
will be a fortress as they come up against Jamaica. Windy conditions, a hot Friday here in Port of Spain, and an even more feisty matchup expected here at the Hazley Crawford Stadium. It's Trinidad and Tobago versus Jamaica. James Saunders is my name. Brent Sancho is alongside me to bring you all of the action, break down all of the analysis as we get set for this match. Two teams that have dominated the Caribbean region for several years, and they're pretty even in the last three fixtures, certainly under Hal Halgumson, who will oversee this Jamaica team, who are preparing for semi-finals of the CONCACAF Nations League. For Angus Eve's men, all the assignment is a big one as well. They get set to face Canada in a one-off plane for a place at the Copa America. Brent Sancho joins the conversation. Brent, Trinidad and Tobago versus Jamaica. You look at the squads, uh, relatively inexperienced squad on both ends. However, it's never really a friendly between these teams. Never is. And uh, when you start uh, jotting back your memories as to the type of fixtures we've seen when these two teams meet, it always have a little bit of extra taste on it. Uh, I remember myself playing against Jamaica, beating them in a quarterfinals, James, in the CSC games. Uh, that game had uh, a bit of taste in his boat on and off the field when we went back to the, the hotel that hosted the both teams. Remarkably enough, when we played Venezuela in the semifinals, the Jamaicans was there to support us. So despite the fact that uh, there is rivalry when it comes straight, of course, there's a, a high level of respect for both teams. When you talk about Kings of the Caribbean and success at a Caribbean level, it's very difficult for you to look past the likes of Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica. Of course, Haiti would now start to enter and probably have been entering that conversation. But I think as it relates to this uh, particular fixture, James, it really comes down to players trying to find themselves on that plane for those nations. Of course, if you look at uh, what has uh, transpired with the, the 2006 Warriors, a name Evans Wise, who's not part of the qualifiers or pictures, played a friendly game and found himself on a plane to Germany. So if that was a story of inspiration, I'm very sure these young men will take to that one. All well, the first pictures of the cast that will entertain us for the next 90 minutes. Jamaica in the black with the gold stripe. Trinidad and Tobago in their customary red, white, and black. Separated by some numbers in the current FIFA rankings, but when it comes to Caribbean Cups, Jamaica, six Caribbean Cups. Trinidad and Tobago, 10 Caribbean Cups. Take nothing away from the Jamaicans, though. The recent form in particular, I've seen them be become the most dominant team in the Caribbean. Job is to impress for those men, the Jamaicans, the reggae boys.
five debutants in Angus Eve's squad this evening. And uh, their job is to impress, uh, to find a plane ticket to the U.S. as Trinidad and Tobago gets set to take on Canada in the CONCACAF playing. All time for pleasantries. The only time you might see these guys friendly for the remainder of the 90 minutes. Hal Halgrimson had eyed some of his under-20 talent for this match, but of course, his under-20 team still in competition in the CONCACAF qualifiers. And let's get introduced. Nikolai Nairon will take charge of this fixture. He will be assisted by Kurt Charles, Melissa Nicholas, the sister of former West Indies captain, Marissa Aguilera, and Cecile Hines will complete the rest of the referee's cast. And uh, introduction to Jamaica. And, uh, well, they've got a very good team. Dixon of Arnett Gardens is in there. Don is currently the leading goal scorer in the Jamaica Premier League, 11 goals. And uh, he will be assisted in attack by Reed, who made the switch from Naroka. Hal Halgrimson is the coach. Well, when you look at the lineups, Reed, Dixon, and Don will make up the attacking lineup with Shepard and Marshall at angling just behind them. And Foster will man the back as goalkeeper, full of experience. For Trinidad and Tobago, as mentioned, five debutants in the lineup, among them Liam Burns. Justin Obiku of Coventry City, well, he will make his first appearance in the red, white, and black. So too Kai Gavi, who campaigned in Canada. Kai Thomas gets a look in, while Chevronez Hamilton is another one of the debutants together with Kai Moose. Angus Eve, the most capped Trinidad and Tobago player, is on the bench as coach. So Biku will lead the point of the attack. Gavi slotting in on the right. Kai Moose, who recently made an impression in the TT Premier League, playing with Top Sando, sitting just behind them, while the two wingbacks on debut today, Chevronez Hamilton and Liam Burns. Some prayer and perhaps some reflection ahead of the task at hand. Majority of this team campaigning in the TT Premier League. Josiah Trimingham, one of the men who will be the leaders in this outfit. Of course, he does represent the Jamaican club, Mount Pleasant, together with Kylie Overy, who's on the bench this afternoon. Mount Pleasant, of course, sits in second in the GPL at the moment. Adrian Fonset, the police goalkeeper and national youth talent, will be in goal. It's been a race to replace Marvin Phillip, the long-standing Trinidad and Tobago International. So Nikolai Nairon sends us on our way here at the Hazley Crawford Stadium. Jamaica in the black and gold. Trinidad and Tobago in the red and black. The last three fixtures between these teams. See them split right down the middle. A win for Trinidad and Tobago in Montego Bay. In Halgrimson's first matches in Jamaica. Draw in Kingston. And of course uh, the Jamaicans perhaps can boast of a heavy 4-1 thrashing of the Soka Warriors at the CONCACAF Gold Cup. Brent Sancho is alongside me, Brent. It's a fixture that uh, not much is known about these teams and what we can expect, but what can we still tell? Well, I think the coaches, first and foremost, would want their instructions carried out. It will be difficult to get uh, fluidity and cohesion simply because... Uh, both sets of players would, uh, wouldn't have much time in preparation as we look at Coach Angus Eve. And I'm very sure that uh, his uh, pre-game speech would be stick to the plan of what has been set forward, try to keep structure and shape, and then you can start to add the extra that you have. And of course, from a Jamaica perspective, I'm, I expect very similar. It's a big test for, for both sets of players, as you mentioned. A lot of uncapped players within the rankings. Thomas Center is knocked out, and he will have a second bite. Well, whips it in the area. Did take a deflection somewhat of Justin Sadu. Well, hasn't gone far, has it? As the Jamaicans try to scramble it away. Finally, they get it clear. Well, one criticism of Halgrimson is the fact that many have noted that he hasn't utilized much locally based players in any of his lineups. Of course, the last time these teams met in Jamaica, he did utilize several players. Halgrimson, of course, the former dentist and the man credited with uh, 
taking Iceland to the quarterfinal run. Just standing out of your shot there, but he is leading the charge on the bench. Oh, they're going to launch this in the area, and uh, well, they're appealing for a handball. Wiku tried to get something going, but he was blocked out. Well, it's one back by Sadu. Nathaniel Gas here. Well, nasty collision, and uh, well, Nikolai Nairon immediately calling for medical attention. Yeah, that's uh, looks like a really bad collision there. Both players had eyes on the football. Maybe that's where the unfortunate side of it stands because they didn't see each other. Full blooded tackle. And uh, looks like Nathaniel Garcia look worse for wear. <laughs> Stefan Young has been back is back up on his feet as we have another look at it. Aaron Pass played in there in the middle of the park. Garcia all eyes on his ball and of course in the collision there. As we have a very good look at it. It's a lot of body parts from both individuals involved in that collision. Let's hope that uh, the players uh, are better. Certainly Young looks like he's shaking it off, but uh, Garcia still needing a bit of treatment. Well, Nathaniel Garcia back in the lineup. We had done if he were to be replaced this early in the fixture. Of course, the older brother, of TNT star man, Levi Garcia. Caribbean Cup winner several years ago with Central FC as well. Now the concussion protocol these days requires that players must leave the pitch. And uh, well, the coach's protocol is that getting a good bird's eye view of the action, Hal Halgrimson. Dentist by profession, well, certainly more famous in the footballing arena, certainly in Jamaica. While uh, Nathaniel Garcia just checks to make sure that well, you can still count after that nasty collision. It's a wee little man, but he's certainly tough. Well, as the Jamaicans say, little but he's Talawa. He certainly does have that steely edge as a midfielder. A player that has uh, been in and around national teams. He's never really cracked it. And... Uh, solidify a, a starting position but uh, every coach that has come in over the last five or so years plus have uh, seen his uh, abilities as something that uh, they should have on the squad this is a game he would hope that of course if he continues to stamp his uh, stamp his authority all over it our play finally really started as Josiah Chimingham launches this one looking for Gavi didn't take it cleanly just blocked away by McCalla. Well, almost ran himself up in some trouble there, Stewart. Finally, now Shepard will look to get it away. Well, Don has made an overlapping run. Just couldn't get past the physical presence of Josiah Chimingham. Of course, uh, Chimingham now also campaigning in the Jamaica Premier League. Stewart. McCalla. Just looking to build the rhythm now, the Jamaicans. Gavi's run himself into some trouble and uh, finally is able to regain possession with a throw across this match uh, you might notice the stands empty at the moment Karifta trials the cause of that of course uh, preparation on going here at the stadium for that which takes place tomorrow well could find a way through here and it might have been deflected and it will be a Jamaica corner Reed showing exactly what he can do when given the opportunity when it comes to a striker that is experienced, been there, done that, it's that man in your picture, Fabio Reed. So good, clever flick through there. He had one thing in mind. He was looking to try to pass it in the far post. Didn't get the right connection. Eventually, it comes off of Tringham, but uh, Fabian Reed is a type of player that uh, can turn something out of nothing quite quickly. 
five goals from three matches for the Arnett Gardens man. And uh, well, it's a corner kick that won't trouble the TNT defense. Round two for the Jamaicans. Time blocked by Liam Burns, one of the debutants this afternoon. Anywhere will do. This possession is gifted back to the Jamaicans to Thomas. As you can quite tell, it's, it's a tad windy here. The, here's the Crawford Stadium. Sits just to the right of the Gulf of Faria and the Audrey Jeffers Highway. Just on the outskirts of Port of Spain. Well, neither team has created any significant goal threat early on in this fixture. Fabian Reed perhaps at the best opportunity. Oh, that's clever footwork. And a crunching challenge from Nathaniel Garcia, who's announced his presence on. Well, Dixon's touch is heavy, the Arnett Gardens man, but he will get a throw. Well, it certainly can be a struggle for coaches trying to get fluidity in a team that primarily hasn't played together very often. Well, this could be inviting. Well, Makala showing his strength just to get ahead of Gavi. Fourteen uncapped players in the Jamaica squad of 26 to this match. Well, this is promising. Showing immense strength here. And they're looking for a window. Perhaps now they can get one away. Is done. Oh, clever footwork. Couldn't beat his man as Gavi is uh, tackled illegally. But a good look for the Jamaicans early on. And they started to find a bit of joy, particularly down this right hand side. And in particular, Justin Dunn. Obviously, making an illegal challenge there on Gavi. A good passage of play for the Jamaicans. Starting to string together one or two passes and looked a bit of a threat. Now it uh, looks like the turn of Trinidad and Tobago. Gavi, it's good skill. Well, this time Nicaragua and Nairon, so nothing wrong. Well, what this game has lacked in fluidity certainly hasn't lacked in physicality. Well, he knows clearly what his instructions are. Chevron is Hamilton, the man in your picture. Versatile player. Just playing midfield for his club, Club Sando, being used in a left back position this afternoon. Well, another try perhaps. Oh, just over the top. Foster had a good look at it. Might have gotten a touch as well. It's a corner. Yeah, and you can see Foster telling his defenders just a tight closer because I had a lot of venom in it. Ceiling just over the bar there, but as you have another look at it, once he gets control here, yeah, went for it. Well, they can swing one back in the area now. It's way by the Jamaicans. Well, it's going to get interesting. Foster had his eyes on it all the way. Well, many people look at this fixed. There's a matchup between the JPL and the Titi Premier League. Kyan Thomas almost snuck in there. See the Jamaicans to get it away. Not interesting and in going forward too quickly, the Jamaicans. Quite confident in their build up and finally swung over the top. Can't find a way past Boones as it just went out into touch. I think both teams are struggling to find their 
progressive midfielder as we see the Jamaican uh, bench angling for Jamaica, the number six. He's uh, been shadowed by Nathaniel Garcia, so he's not getting the opportunities to shift the side of attack or point of attack. And it's similar for Kai Moos on the Trinidad Tobago side. So that has made the progressing the ball a little bit of a challenge. That's a good bit of turn of space. Oh, he's found some space dangerous. here. Trying to get a look in and once that had the last touch. Corner. So this time the Jamaicans forcing a corner after defending one just mere moments earlier. Well, that's Alex Marshall. Showing a good turn of pace here. Getting past uh, Chevin S. Hamilton. Leaving him for dead. Thought his decision making there could have been better. He went to shoot from a very, very tight angle. And Fonset uh, had that well covered. Not even sure if he was uh, needed to make that save because it looked like it was heading wide. Nevertheless, he couldn't tell, so he did the right thing. Well, they're lining up for this one. All the big men inside the area for Jamaica. Oh, just over the head there. Of Stewart who had arrived at the penalty spot. Spoons. Well, he's lost that in a bad area. Obiku and uh, Josiah trimming him to the rescue. Well, this match uh, starting at 3 p.m. local time here in Trinidad and Tobago. Friday evening. It's quite typically quite hot at this time. Clouds overhead just lingering, making conditions, inviting the cool for the players. It's Marshall. Well, this is probing. Well, did find Dixon arriving late at the back post. Couldn't steer it past goalkeeper for set. Yeah, it's a good bit of vision there by Marshall. He's uh, already looked very dangerous in all that he's done. Just some moments ago, taking on Chevenez Hamilton and leaving him for dead. And now trying to make a pinpoint cross. Certainly the lively of uh, all four wingers so far in this game, but uh, maybe Garvey could pull me wrong. Speaking of lively, Garvey, 1v1. It's not a bad idea. Knocked out at the front door. So here with Shepard. Well, talk about confidence from Anglin. He's as comfortable as a polar bear in the Arctic. That man angling. One pass, the middle line, and able to pick out Dunn. Finally getting some movement forward. Oh, look at that. Made his man disappear. And he wins the throw for his team. He's shown some uh, fancy footwork so far. Alex Marshall again there. I must have to come in and support his uh, club teammate. Stewart just over the head of Dixon oh can he find a way past Burns he tossed so with some bit of ease well put open the door here for Jamaica and uh, just ran out of real estate in the end but again the Jamaicans are huffing and puffing yeah and it's uh, the supply of concern is coming from both of the wingers let's have a look at the Bench for Trinidad Tobago. In that occasion for Jamaica, it was the man, Kaim Dixon. Again, James, maybe better decision making may have uh, gotten him inside. But he tried uh, maybe a trick too many. They're starting to take a grip of this game, the Jamaicans, certainly looking lively in, the, in their attacking third. And uh, with the likes of Dixon and Marshall, certainly two players uh, that look very competent in 1v1 situations. Here goes Marshall again. Oh, looking like a conductor at the moment, pulling all the strings. Anglin. Stewart. So these his options and decides that Young is the best one. Oh, finally, Obiku decides to press here, forcing the Jamaicans to move forward. 
Marshall. So they're finding space now. Red Shields forced to retreat. Needs a good cross. Well, he's found one, but needed a better touch. It wasn't there. Maybe Marshall can produce some more magic. Well, there's a man down out of your picture, yeah? but they don't mind. There's a, well, sends a mortar from distance. Just missing its mark. Certainly finding rhythm. And uh, Makala, at the moment, seems to be in a bit of discomfort. Sule Makala. One of a few Mong Pleasant players in the Jamaica lineup. Oh, might be a closed match, but they had the opportunity to come in. And uh, oh, finding a way inside his head at the moment. Love to know what his thought pattern might be. Has been quite active on the sidelines since the match began, Angus Eve. Of course, there are several scouts around today as well, Brent. Having a look at some of the players who perhaps will look for overseas opportunities. Yeah, we've seen that. And uh, we've seen players, of course, from both countries as we prepare for the water break as expected and games played at uh, this time. Coach uh, Derek King there with Rondell Gibson. Now of Club Sando, formerly of... Eagles FC, probably likely to replace that man there in your picture who took a very nasty knock early in the game with his collision with Stephen Young. But I'm sure Jamaicans uh, would be the happier of the two. They've uh, grown into the contest as it went along. Certainly the likes of Kahim Dixon and, of course, uh, their star man so far, Alex Marshall has caused a spot of bother or two for Angus Eve and his charges in red. Oh, new boy, Kai Garvey, having some words with coach Angus Eve. Ronald Primus, one of those, uh, number 12 in the picture. Caribbean Cup winner with Trinidad and Tobago back in 2014. Never really went on to cement a place at the senior level, although he did play at two Youth World Cups. Well, as expected, Rondell Gibson will make his debut for Trinidad and Tobago, replacing Nathaniel Garcia. Of course, he did suffer a nasty collision and uh, perhaps uh, precaution against the concussion Oh, it's hot. I'm sure you can tell from the sideline chatter. Oh, the boy crew just ran into some traffic there and was almost trampled over by Stewart. Got Stewart, the Harbourview man. Garvey. Oh, just disconnected from the silver. No real connection there between Don and the overlapping Marshall. Going past the 20 minute mark here, but here's the Crawford Stadium. Still no goals between. Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica to welcome our viewers across the Caribbean and Sportsmax. Oh, here's Rondell Gibson getting his first touch. Denzel Smith, of course, on the bench, uh, keeping company to Nathaniel Garcia, who's just gone off. Kaim Thomas with the given goal, Liam Burns in a dangerous area. Obek, who is there, gets ahead on it. Not enough. But promising. Yeah, a bit more enterprise in there from Trinidad Tobago. First time really in this game, able to 
put together a couple of passes. Burns at the end of this cross. Obeko may be overrunning his uh, charge towards the goal. Always having to stretch, can't generate the power necessary. And eventually, straight back in the safe hands of uh, Kemal Forster. But well, that's a little bit better from Trinidad, and maybe if they can uh, be a bit more consistent with uh, that sort of approach, it may start to edge this game more to their favor. Interesting, James uh, Rondell Gibson is into the game, and he already is uh, playing a little bit uh, deeper than the, the person that he replaced in Nathaniel Garcia. Almost a double pivot with Kai Moes. That's good skill again. Well, he's opened the door. Can they get in? Marshall, well, good touch on Sadu. He's taking it away from Marshall as Garvey tries to get it away. Well, they try again, the Jamaicans. Ken running into a red light. Makala losing possession as Obiku picks it up. Oh, good skill. And uh, just chipped up in the end from Shepard. Didn't like what he saw, Jamon Shepard. Hamilton searching, couldn't beat McCalla. Referee saw nothing wrong. Play continues. Oh. This time it's Sadu who goes down in a heap. Sadu, of course, uh, plays his club football right here in Trinidad and Tobago with the defense force. Gibson. Well, it's found a way to trying to get Kyle Thomas involved, but the former national, the 20 player, is bundling over his man. 21 years old now, Kyle Thomas. It's part of the last Trinidad and Tobago on the 20 setup prior to the one that played in the CONCACAF qualifiers. And, uh, well, just being a bit naughty that time. Bundling over. Stephen Young and from Portmore. Akala. Losing possession to Moose as Trimingham tries to get it forward. Kepson chipped up. So he's did no time in getting into the game, Rondell Gibson. Yeah, he has, and uh, he's. Uh certainly left his print on it what he's doing uh james he's making himself available for the football he's trying to play in the pockets and always make himself readily for any pass and option and that is what uh, trying to be will need if they are to get some sort of fluidity in this game that will be another corner for the soka warriors Certainly will wait their turn to get ready. It's Thomas. This one is high. Gibson is arriving. Trimingham got a head on it. Oh, hasn't gone anywhere. Sides over the goal line, but there might have been a fall before that. As the Jamaicans win possession. Angusif urging his team to press higher. Oh, got to stop Marshall first. So slippery as they come. Arguably one been one of the best players of the match so far, Alex Marshall, the man from Portmore. Burns, not really getting a handle on it. And it will be the Jamaicans happy to take back possession. Go, 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 go. 
Marshall. It's done well to open up some space here. And they will drive into the space here, the Jamaicans. Well, the flag go up. It comes late. Just arriving a bit too early. But the warning signs are there. Yeah, and uh, I think Dixon would be disappointed there. Could have held his run a bit. He's looking right across the line. It didn't need him to go this early. Right about here, when you realize that you're going past it, you have to pull it out and take the width. Instead, he kept going forward. And of course, uh, eventually went offside. A good opportunity there from Jamaica, but uh, really and truly poor mistake by Dixon in going offside. Moose, well, slipped away from his man. Couldn't get past the second. He's not with the ball. Well, the tussle for this and uh, does really well to get it away. Well, it's one back by Ronald Primus. This time moves as space to advance. Yes, Rondell Gibson. Chevron is Hamilton. Trimingham. Just a handful of senior international caps at Trimingham. Gives away possession, but it's one back though to Gibson. Just not finding space easily. And uh, oh, oh. certainly found the boot to the back of his heels, Kyle Thomas. It's a good opportunity though, just outside the area. And uh, of course, Kyle Thomas known uh, renowned for his set piece ability. Sports played in team there. Very, very late with that uh, challenge. Well, the sun has just joined us here at the Hazley Crawford Stadium in splendid glory. As you can see, all these shadows have magically evaporated off the surface. Thomas certainly wants a piece of this. So too, Gavi. Will be Thomas. Deflected. Well, oh, just wide of the mark. I tell you what, if you are to take indication from Kamal Foster's body language, he was in a cement blocks on his feet stuck to the ground that deflection had him going in the wrong wave and he was very thankful that the ball didn't end up in the back of the net big deflection Kamal Foster already going to his right just couldn't get back and the ball goes to a corner that's a free header well just missed his mark yet again he got in a really good area just couldn't find it on target and uh, in the last few minutes, uh, Justin Obeku has had some of the better chances for Trinidad and Tobago. Certainly looked a threat in the air. Oh, we've gone past the half hour mark, still no goals in this fixture. Last time these teams met in a friendly international. Ended in a goalless draw at the National Stadium in Kingston. Dixon. Couldn't find a way through. Rondell Gibson now. It's wiggling away, finding space. Linking up with Sadu. And now they will get Gavi involved. It's 1v1. Well, Sado's arrived there, but his touch a bit too heavy. Yeah, and uh, easily, James, the best passage of play for Trinidad and Tobago in this half. It's a good bit of footwork by Gibson, changing the point of attack. Once Gavi got into this position here with the football, could be the vision by the young man from Canada. Line breaking run from Sadu.
but the touch let him down. Well, here's Karim Thomas. Burns plays with the league leaders, AC Port of Spain. This time, Gavi. It's well taken away by McCalla. Danger seemed imminent for a second. McCalla spotted the danger well. Momentum has certainly shifted in the last few minutes. Yeah, and you'd have to give Rondell Gibson credit for that since he's come on the park. He's demanded the football and he's been uh, very economical in his distribution. Chase for Primus. Hamilton to keep it in. Kai Moose. And that's a chase that Obikwu will not win. Well, Moose has been battered in the last interaction. Now plays for Club Sando. Fifth place in the standings in the TT Premier League. One of his teammates, Jamal Jack, there as well. Oh, certainly left his bird's eye position. He wants to get close to the action now, Hal Halgimson. Yeah, I think he's felt that shift as well. Certainly Trinidad and Tobago now in the ascendancy. And it really has been, James, that battle at the middle of the park that has decided which team has the impetus. And the, the last... Uh, Five plus minute, maybe even ten. Might have to say that uh, Trent Tobago has taken charge in that department. Moves finds Robert Primus. Almost lost it for a second, but he recovered well. Almost got Sadu in. It's won by Primus. Legally so, says the rough in fact. Uh, does go through down as big as we. I'm a Hal Gibson. Jamaican coach uh, said in his pre-match talks that he intends to see at least 90 minutes from most of the players in his squad. Also, we welcome all of our viewers across the Caribbean and around the world via our Sportsmax app. Of course, uh, download the Sportsmax app today via the Apple Store and Google Play. And you can capture all of the action the Jamaican Premier League and the TTPFL via the Sportsmax app. Get it today. Marshall with the interception. And uh, just bumped out of possession. And uh, Nikolai Nyron is cautioning Chevroness Hamilton for some rough play. Well, he's done well, the big wheel. Was he fouled? Well, Nikolai Nyron agrees. It's another free kick for Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah, and that's good work by the big man from Coventry. That's what you want from a forward when you're trying to press. Have to be alert, and he was. And with that errant touch, he was able to get his body in between. And now puts Trinidad and Tobago in a very promising position, particularly with the likes of Rondell Gibson and, of 
course, that man, Kaim Thomas. And we've seen Hamilton as well. Had a few, but it looks like uh, Gibson is the one that has taken charge of it. So Rondell Gibson did make the January transfer from Eagles FC. Top Sando. And uh, now making the step up to the senior international level on debut. On target as well. Foster was there. Position Foster alert to the danger. Oh, he's been picked, his pocket picked. And Dixon will try to advance. Oh, that's cheat at Adrian Fonset. Oh, the keeper Foster is down. That's the reason that Nikolai Nyron stopped play. So just seemed to have taken a knock in the last challenge that was made. Of course, uh, they do have reserves on the bench. They can call upon the Jamaicans. Young Jaden Hibbert of Atlanta FC. Yeah, just uh, recently drafted uh, of Atlanta United. First, ex first time around the Jamaica call-up. He talked about the excitement in his family both uh, at home and of course in Jamaica and uh, both teams uh, of course with uh, difference in direction Jamaica fully utilizing their diaspora for team selection which have seen uh, several players recruited from outside the shores of Jamaica and of course Trian Tobago certainly not as uh, adventurous as Jamaicans certainly the law doesn't allow it the passport situation here or citizenship situation stops at the mother and father doesn't go to the grandparents maybe something Trinidad and Tobago could look at in the future James I certainly hope so not many Trinidad and Tobago players playing in the top flight competition around Europe these days since the days of the Dwight Yorks and Russell Latapies. But it's something that we've seen across the CONCACAF region. You look at the likes of Curacao, Haiti, for example, and, and of course, uh, Jamaica. They've certainly utilized it to the advantage. Yeah, and it's a hot topic in the Caribbean. Of course, uh, there are the protagonists that believe that uh, it's times the development on island and of course there are the ones that uh, believe that it benefits because it helps the country play more top level games which of course brings in the finances to develop the young talent on the island interesting conversation of course that uh, one of the utilization of the diaspora James, for me, I think as tiny as we are in the Caribbean, you have to use everything that you can to bring success on the football pitch. And in a region with the likes of the USA, Canada, Mexico, etc., with uh, huge populations and a huge playing pool to choose from, I certainly believe that uh, countries, if they have the opportunity, need to utilize what they can. Sadu's done well to win it back, and uh, oh, that was an attempted shot from Kai Moose. Just couldn't steer it in the direction wanted. It's almost scary to think that the likes of Kyle Walker, Raheem Sterling as well, could have represented the reggae boys in competition. I know there's still talks of uh, Mason Greenwood. Of course, he would not be able to play. He would have... Uh played his amount of national games that may not make him qualify but there's still a long long list of uh, potential Jamaican targets 
That's uh, being discussed and probably negotiated. That's a good bit of work there by Thomas. He wins a corner. And uh, Trinidad and Tobago currently leading in the corner category. Haven't utilized it to the advantage so far. Just that one header from Ubeku that went over the top. And that's surprising, James, because when you look at the likes of uh, Tringenham and Primus, who've done very well in the TTPFL. Of course, Tringenham going on to the JPL now. Of course, you mentioned Ubeku. They should at least uh, find the target. And a man like this, Thomas, to deliver. That's a poor delivery, though. No, not his best delivery. Won't be tipped for that. And uh, we'll have a second bite, Lou. I'm Thomas, of course, uh, along with the likes of Rial Gill, former under 20 talent. Played at the last CONCACAF championship, of course, at Trinidad and Tobago, just failing this week. Qualify. Oh, that's a big header. And Stewart. Well, <laughs> Foster took that really low out, but he hasn't really. Rap daunted, and the referee's whistle comes to his help. What a scary moment, though, for the reggae boys. <laughs> Hasn't always looked that confident dealing with the big aerial balls, Foster. Oh, they're feeling for a handball. Stewart, not going to get it as advantage is given to Jamaica. And uh, it's time to be fouled against them. And no surprise, who's the man that's down at the moment? Alex Marshall. Certainly been a thorn in the side of the TNT defense. Clock ticking down just 20 seconds of regulation time and what will be added. That's of course the water break. That's to me that it might just be around three minutes that will be added. Pop oh, high boot there from Primus. Effective does Gibson squirms as we out of trouble before it's fondled over. So it is confirmed that it will be three minutes to be added. Well, how slippery is an eel? If anybody knows Rundle Gibson, he's been a slippery customer and pin him down that easily. Well, the sun certainly out in full force here in Port of Spain. And here's the Crawford Stadium. Started this match with some cloud cover. Well, that has changed exponentially. It's blazing at the moment. Players would be happy to make their way into the halftime tunnel. Of course, Carifta trials will be taking place here tomorrow at the Hazley Crawford Stadium. One of the reasons for the empty stadium. This match was closed off to the public. And of course, uh, one of the reasons for the early start of this fixture as well. Yes, Gibson. Trimmingham. Chavernez Hamilton. Whoa giving his man the old banana peel and uh, well he's taking the old tumble not familiar with that position very much Hamilton usually employed as a winger or midfielder used this afternoon as a left back well he finds his club mate moves dancing shoes couldn't stay on his foot and uh, well, it's a whistle as Gibson tried to find some shooting room. Oh, 
Well, it's almost used up all of the additional time that was added. Just about 30 seconds of it remaining. Still a goal less between Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica. Of course, at halftime, we will have the highlights and uh, some analysis. Well, Kaim Thomas could be through. Niemseek getting a foot in. But still not over, and it will be a way to Dunn. He's got some support. As the Jamaicans push forward, they'd certainly like to get something before halftime. There won't be enough time as Nikolai Nyron signals the end of 45 minutes. So 45 minutes that has ebbed and flowed in terms of momentum for either team. Rondell Gibson making an impact after coming on as a substitute for Nathaniel Garcia. Sadu and Kaim Thomas getting in good positions. Don and Reed. And uh, perhaps Alex Marshall, the most dangerous of Jamaica so far. But at the end of 45 minutes, it's all blank. Trinidad and Vigo nil. Jamaica nil. We take a pause and be back with the highlights. Here's the Crawford Stadium is alive and alive with football action. No goals though. Still goalless between Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica in the first of two friendly internationals. Well, 45 minutes is gone and uh, it's time to look back, rewind the clock, see how it unfolded. Started with the pleasant trees, Nikolai Nairon leading the charge, Jamaica using a number of uncapped players. So to Trinidad and Tobago. To start trimming them. One of the leaders in the bunch. And it started early with Kaim Thomas having the first rail go. Costa had to get a touch to see it over. Have some warning signs of what was to come. And then after that, well, the match ebbed. And it certainly flowed. Jamaica, one point, took a lot of control. This man in particular, Alex Marshall, wiggling up his way to space, forcing a save from Fonset. And they hopped and puffed. That one coming from distance from Anglin. Kaim Thomas, though, might argue that he perhaps came the closest. Deflected free kick, leaving his man like a statue. Not inside the net. And then later on, from one of his corners, Obiku. Just missing the top corner. And another free kick, Rondell Gibson. Later on, he came on as a substitute. Forcing a save from Foster. Not enough to beat the man. And that is all that 45 minutes coughed up in terms of action. Maybe the numbers can tell us a different picture as we dissect the digits. And uh, when you look at that, Trinidad and Tobago leading on shot conks. Certainly a physical contest. Jamaicans committing nine, while Trinidad and Tobago four. No cards so far in this fixture. Jamaica's keep a foster forced into the majority of action. But all of that comes from naught, like what the score is at the moment. 0-0, zero, zero. Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica. We'd love to hear the analysis and uh, get the inside scoop on that. Hans Devines is standing by with Brent Sancho. Thank you very much, James Saunders. Nil-nil on the half. But, Brent, let's talk about the way these teams match up. We're talking skills, physicality, and everything in between. 
Well, we did say that there would be some challenges when it comes to fluidity because of the composition of both teams, uh, as we mentioned. Uh, really, a plethora of all-star players from both of the respective domestic league. So that had its challenges in, in the way that teams play. But certainly, Jamaica looked like the team that was uh, given more impetus going yeah. forward in the first 20 minutes or so. And then, of course, that change in the last 20, 25 minutes for Trinidad and Tobago, starting to find a little bit of gaps and spaces behind the Jamaican defense. It's been an even game so far. Yeah. I think both coaches would be moderately happy from what they've seen so far from their charges. Well, let's talk about some of the charges. Let's talk about Dixon and Marshall from the Jamaica team. I tell you what, exceptional 1v1 players, one on the left-hand side, the other on the right-hand side. Alex Marshall showing a clean pair of heels to Chevrolet Hamilton on a couple occasions. His decision-making when he got into the box let him down. But what he's presented is a genuine outlet for the Jamaicans. They've been able to utilize him to great effect. And, of course, the Dixon on the other side, ever yeah. willing, getting forward up the left-hand side. More importantly, when he gets into the sort of areas uh, that he should be executing better, it didn't go well. And both yeah. teams are very guilty of that situation. They've not been able to execute in the goal scoring and properly. That's why we've seen a limited amount of goal scoring opportunities or goal score or goal mount action for that part. It's been a team first half, yeah. pleasing on the eye but certainly lacked the sort of activity that we thought we would have seen. Well, Nathaniel Garcia came off, and in <laughs> came Rondell Gibson, clearly making a difference. Well, a massive difference, and you call it the Gibson factor. Before Garcia came off, uh, the challenge that Trinidad and Tobago had is the midfielders were coming onto the ball straight on, so they were taking two and three touches and passing the ball back, not able to spread the, or change the point of attack. But Gibson came on and saw something different. He started to come a bit side on and take one touch and was able to look forward forward wow. to make those passes and that has been critical in terms of the change that we saw in the middle of the park when a midfielder has broken a line through a turn or movement it then gives your offensive players opportunities to start to advance and that's what Gibson did for Trinidad Tobago so far in a short stint came on in the 22nd minute yeah. but certainly had an impact so far in this football game well extreme lesson for players <laughs> and coaches alike Brent what can we look forward to in the second half well, I think for a Jamaica perspective, they want to, want to neutralize Gibson and his ability to move the ball around in the middle of the park. So expect them to press a little bit higher up the park. Expect them to go back to the usage of Marshall and Dixon and what they've been able to do in the first 20 minutes. Try to get them in isolated positions higher up the park. And for Trinidad and Tobago, they have to be a little bit more cutting edge in the, attack, in the attacking third. I think that's what the message would be. And of course, Hans, this is unlimited substitution. Yeah. So expect to see a huge amount of changes that may disrupt the flow of the game. Well, the flow of the game continues when we come back around here at the Hazy Crawford Stadium. Trinidad and Tobago nil, Jamaica nil. When we come back, second half action. Son is back out, and so too the players as we get set for second half action here at the Hazley Crawford Stadium. Still goalless between Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica. We'll alert you in terms of our changes as they come about, and uh, we do expect that there might be quite a few changes. Both coaches, of course, are having a look at some of the players that will help their teams to make, of course, preparing for the semi final of the CONCACAF Nations League. Trinidad and Tobago getting ready for that plane against Canada for the Copa America. James Orders is my name, Brent Sancho is alongside me. Heard all of the halftime analysis of uh, all the action. Rondell Gibson, certainly one of the standout players. And we get set for the second half. Well, it's a second half uh, that certainly would have uh, some sorts of changes in it. As you mentioned, these uh, two games are part of preparatory works for both teams for their Nations League assignments that uh, they respectively have. Oh, and of course, for that 
reason it's unlimited substitutions so expect to see a host of subs being used as we see the men in the red white and black after their halftime break Well, look at the cast members These players make their return to the field no sign of any real changes just yet for Trinidad and Tobago most of the starting lineup that completed the first half looks set and ready to come out for the second Foster he's been busy three saves for the Jamaica shot stopper So we'll let you know of any real changes as the Jamaica team makes their way out of the dressing room. Might be a couple of changes. Of course, uh, Hal Halgrimson did say that he would like uh, every player in the squad to get at least 90 minutes of action over the course of the two matches, of course. And they do look set to make a couple of changes from their end. Among those set to come in is Romario Kutri of Mount Pleasant. Jason Wright also seems lined up and ready to come in. Shamon Shepard will return as he was part of the first half action. So Romario Gutri and Jason Wright two of the changes so far you will have confirmation on your screen in just a second of the changes made so far in this fixture so I can tell you it's quite hot here just after 4 p.m. local time local fans of course missing out on this one because of the fact that uh, Carifta pres preparations are ongoing here at the stadium tomorrow Well, it's all for one and one for all. Kaim Thomas, one of the most dangerous of the so-called Warriors players in the first half. If anybody would know that, man, certainly will. So no changes for the so-called Warriors. Two changes for Jamaica as we get set for the second half. Action is away here at the Hillsby Crawford Stadium. Chevroniers Hamilton gets back into the actual Dallas Tobago does have the likes of Nathaniel James, Ross Russell Jr., Unangaron, and uh, likes of Dwayne Mockett to call upon. Second leg of this fixed deal will take place on Sunday. 4 p.m. at the Larry Gove Stadium in East Trinidad. Of course, that match will be available to fans who can view it live. Always a tasty encounter every time these teams meet. Moose. Liam Burns. So we by Jamaica. Wright gets his first touch. Oh, this is long. Another of the substitutes. Kutri couldn't get to it in the end. Taken away by his opposite number, Josiah Trimingham. So we by Moose and uh, will be another throw for the Reggae boys. Marshall. He's found a way to get in, Marshall. And, uh, well, Pierce have been bumped. It's won a free kick. And just like the first staff, he's brought his magic tricks to the second. And he's won himself a free kick. Just this time, he's coming on the left-hand side and not the right-hand side. Good bit of trickery there by Marshall. Certainly a player that uh, has beliefs in his uh, ability to take his man on. And why not? He's done it well so far. 
So it's Romario Gucci, the substitute. Whips this one across the face. Oh, might have gotten a touch there for a second. This could fall anywhere. Well, fun said, how did he get a body in that? As the flag eventually goes up in the end. What a save from Fonsell. What a chance for Jamaica. Yeah. Hesitation in the box by the rear guard of Trinidad and Tobago. Fonsell there making sure that he made himself big. Not, not be known to him. He was offside, but yet a good stop by the man from, from miscellaneous police. Hamilton. Got space to run into and he tries to get it through to Abiku. Try again the Soka Warriors. Primus. Trimming them. To play with Miami FC. One point in the USL. Returning home to Club Sando and then on to Mount Pleasant in Jamaica. Angling. Found an angle. And the Dixon's pass is cut out. Will be a throw. Oh, several debutants turned down into Bigger in this match. Uh, how do you think they've fared so far? I think it's been a mixed bag. I think defensively. Both uh, Hamilton and Burns have found themselves wanting maybe a bit of uh, exuberance on their path. Maybe a bit too tight to their man and not, uh, of course, following some basic defensive principles. But offensively, they've uh, not done too badly, those two in particular. Outside of that, uh, Buku looks a good focal point. Certainly the height that uh, Trinidad Tobago has missed for some time. Of course, uh, there's Brent Sam that, and Rian Moore. But uh, a post-up player, a player that uh, you can play things into, looks the part. And of course, still relatively young. But I think the, the talk of the half so far has to be Rondell Gibson and what he's been able to produce. Well, Burns cross looks exciting. And uh, just over the head of everybody. The top left to all give you an idea of the changes that were made. Of course, Don and Young among the players replaced. Oh, believe that action. Uh, oh, you'll get treatment. Severin is Hamilton, one of those debutants Brent spoke about. He's been utilized in a position that we aren't quite familiar in seeing him in. Yeah, he normally plays a bit high up the park. But uh, it's uh, all part and parcel and trying to assert yourself into a national team. Of course, uh, the ability to play in numerous positions will help. And certainly can help in those sorts of situations. And I know, James, we were talking about the diaspora factor. And I understand uh, in my uh, travels during the halftime that a certain Mason Greenwood may be uh, appearing in the reggae boys' color soon. I know conversation is uh, heating up. And uh, there so certainly seems to be some sort of uh, agreement on both sides. Of course, unconfirmed reports, but uh, that was the chatter in the halftime down at the benches. That would be a very interesting insertion into the Jamaican line. Of course, Mason Greenwood with only one senior team cap, which certainly means that he can make the travels across. That would be intriguing for the Jamaicans. Certainly would have the eyes on MV. Our campaigns in Hetafe has been described as uh, by the La Liga president Javier Tebas as the best English player. Might soon have to change that to Jamaican. Certainly done well since making the switch across to Hetafe. Five goals and five assists a season. 22 matches.
certainly would be some added quality to the Jamaican lineup that already possesses immense offensive possibilities, the likes of Leon Bailey. Well, the tempo of the match has gone down significantly. Coincided with the arrival of the bright sunny conditions. And uh, well, Fonset was taking no chances there. Sent that high into the stands. Can they find a way through? Maybe now they can. Booted away by Trimingham. Looking for Marshall. Has Burns to deal with. Swung himself on the wrong side of his man, but he's recovered well, Burns. And, uh, oh, Marshall might have done enough to win a throw for the Jamaicans. Sangolin. Shishwan Anglin. One set had to save hands. Well, coming into this match, Coach Halgrimson also mentioned that uh, he's never concerned, or he isn't concerned, in fact, by the results of this fixture. More concerned about the individual performances that he sees. Well, that's been given away. Chance can be opened up here. It's a sloppy in the end from the reggae boys. Gifted a wonderful opportunity to go forward. Right, just a bit indecisive. Will be a throw. How can we see now? Said if he did have the opportunity, he would utilize several of his under 20 players. However, most of them still in action in the CONCACAF qualifiers that are ongoing. And Dallas Big, of course, uh, just missing out, losing the group top spot to Canada this week. Angus Evie. Objective, it might be similar, but a bit different. Can you really believe coaches when they say they don't care about the result? <laughs> it's just like, uh, it's just like, uh, of course, uh, telling your wife that uh, she looks good when you know something in the dress doesn't match up. They do care. And uh, especially in a game of uh, this sort of rivalry, and as they always say in sports, winning is a mentality. It's a habit, and it's a part of an environment. And you want to win football matches, small-sided games in practice, all the way up to World Cup games. You want to win. That's the bottom line. Yes, there are mitigating factors within it all. Of course, team performances, individual performances, tactics, structure. But uh, all in all, the exercise is to win. Burns couldn't find a big wound, was lurking in behind the defense. Of course, uh, this match uh, not affecting FIFA rankings by any stretch. It'll be unlimited substitutions, etc. So, good coaches, of course, are given the flexibility to experiment. Also, outside of the FIFA window, and the unavailability of several players playing overseas. We talk about uh, team preparation and, of course, uh, the recent displays of Caribbean teams in the region, irrespective of age group. And I know one of the factors is the uh, ability to play these sorts of games more regularly when you start having that conversation 
you have to bring in the topic of travel in the Caribbean and how difficult it is, how expensive it is. You know, as a player, we played uh, Grenada, St. Lucia, Barbados, and Guyana every Monday morning. And in this sort of situation, uh, it's uh, been a bit of a challenge because of the expensive nature of travel in the Caribbean. And a big part of development, a big part of uh, players getting better is being able to play these type of game. That's a brilliant ball. Well, he's wanting some space here. Ball. That's good skill. Can he, Can he get in? Can't get past Fonson. Yeah. He does eventually. And the Jamaicans are up and ahead. Dixon with the tricks and the Dixieland dance to celebrate. And it's 1-0. It's good attacking play. Poor defensive play. But I'm quite sure if you support Jamaica, you wouldn't mind about the poor defensive play. Intelligent run by Dixon. We spoke about him at the half. Gets it in behind Hamilton. Poor defending. Ball watching there. But look at this for a bit of skill. Gets in. Puts his man down and then rolls it into the back of the net. Gets in his action there. Hamilton goes. Dixon again passes it in. It's too close to Fonset. And because of that, he's able to place it in the back of the net. He's been impressive for most of this game, James. Dixon and certainly deserve to go on the score sheet. He's just scored one goal domestically this season. Dixon. He's gotten one now with the national team. Plays a scup football with Arnett Gardens, one of several Arnett Garden players on the starting lineup this afternoon. Oh, how will the Soka Warriors respond to the latest assault? They'd have to attack, certainly. And they'd have to be a little bit more adventurous going forward. It's muscled out of possession there, Kaim Thomas. Marshall. Getting up to his name, just marshalling a lot of the midfield traffic. Cunningham came on as a substitute. And he's done really well to pick out Ricardo Thomas. And uh, easily picked up by Fonset. Yeah, that's a terrific bit of skill there by Gibson. To elude his man angling, who's uh, now going to have a conversation with the referee. And here comes uh, a change for Jamaica. Looks like Hibbert, the man from Atlanta United. Jaden Hibbert will make his appearance for the Reggae Boys. And he will replace Captain Foster. But of course, expected to make his Atlanta United debut the first team soon after being drafted. And uh, well, right on cue, Trinidad and Tobago have decided to change their goalkeeper as well. Adrian Fonset's afternoon is over. And in will come Christopher Bigot, the defense four shot stopper. Certainly a race uh, for the number one position, Trinidad and Tobago. Marvin Phillip suddenly announcing his retirement just a couple months ago. Of course, uh, the emergence of uh, or emerging talent Denzel Smith, who's been exceptional in the Nations League. But we've seen goalkeepers pop out, and of course, for that man that says Gorning Bigot, and of course, Fonset, who would probably like to retain his. Or at least get back in the reckoning. Oh, yeah, but called into action early. And shooting him while well, taking no chances.
Marshall. Skill from Thomas. As Cunningham sends it all the way back to the goalkeeper. Substitutes linking up very well. Well, this is inviting. Can't be trimming them though. Marshall, he skipped past one. That's a great idea. Deflected. And again, he's forced a corner. It's been the man to make it happen, Marshall. But very similar to the first half, Jamaica starting the more positive of the two teams. They have already a goal to show for that. And uh, they're looking to try to get a second now through this set play. Well, Paging at the front door, almost got in as well. And uh, somehow, some way, they're allowed to sneak in the reggae boys. Sule Makala just wants to know how come he didn't find the net. Yeah. He had all the time in the world. I know my good friend Colin Murray would say that's a defender's effort. But as uh, one of the senior officers in the Defenders Union, I would say he just uh, missed a bit of time in there, James. Sure, he could live with that. Fair assessment. In time, though, Kaim Thomas was on the receiving end of some treatment as the reggae boys might be calling some more officers to duty. Angie Fletcher among those getting set to come in. Chimingham's pass is cut out. It's Thomas. Marshall. Which is the point of the attack, and he could get in here now. The Jamaicans, well, Dixon side netting came close, he knows it. Yeah, another good bit of play there by the Marshall Dixon duo. Switch free ball, Hamilton doesn't deal with it. Dixon doesn't even think twice. Puts his laces through it, but doesn't is not able to hit the target. He does hit the target, but the side of it, and not the frame of it. Bigot looked a bit troubled, but uh, eventually it's, uh, it's going out. That's a interesting back pass there for a second. <laughs> Speaker looks first to everything now. The, the game's uh, momentum's changed, the tempo is changed, and uh, certainly they're the ones asking all the questions. Well, that was a question that was asked by. From Mario Gucci. Gravity just not happening for him. Couldn't keep it down. As we will have some more changes. Devontae Campbell. And the man from Waterhouse. Fletcher set to come in as well. As an opportunity for some hydration as well. No Michael Shaves just yet. The 17 year old still waiting for his first senior cap. In the meantime though, well... Hydration will be foremost on the minds of the players as they huddle around the water coolers. Played over an hour of football so far. Just one change to Trinidad and Tobago while Reggae boys have made a host of changes. How do you suspect the water cooler talk might be at the moment? I think from a Trinidad Tobago perspective is uh, they've lost the impetus. They finished the first half, certainly with their tails up and being on top. And uh, the midfield where they started to have some sort of have some sort of uh, rhythm and movement, that's gone. Certainly in the second uh, phase of this uh, water break, after this water break, they will want to do better than that. 
Of course, don't forget you can download the Sportsmax app today. Get it on Google Play or download from the Apple Store. And of course, you can watch all the action right here on the go. Downloading the Sportsmax app. Tell a friend. Well, I think for Jamaica, it's uh, more the same. That uh, tandem of uh, Marshall and Dixon has uh, paid a tremendous amount of dividends for them. Looks like, however, I believe Marshall may have departed, uh, James. Marshall, one of the changes. Players coming off as uh, Waterhouse's Andrew Fletcher has come in. That's Cunningham. Thomas. Can't beat Trimmingham. Anybody's ball now. Primus got something on it. Dixon, he's changed sides now. Dancing away from challenges. Angling. Well, they've done really well. It's Fletcher in a good area. This could be number two. Well, it came off the defender. And, uh, well, might not be over yet. The nightmare. Just needs a yard of space and just needed a touch. Good work from the substitute, Devontae Campbell. Nobody could get their shoelaces on it. Completion boards rattling at the moment. Soko Warriors are shaking up at home. Got the finding space, angling. Got space to move into the Warriors retreat. Anglin turning away from traffic. Top left, of course, he changes. And uh, this time it comes to nothing. Well, there's a player down just out of your picture. And, uh, well, Scott Stewart looks in a bit of discomfort. The have a view, man. And there we go. Michael Shaves, 17 years old. Scored two goals in Trinidad and Tobago's recent CONCACAF under 20 qualifying tournament. And uh, it's earned him a chance to represent the senior team. What a huge moment for the young man. Just a couple of days ago, he was playing at the U20 level, and now the possibility of uh, making his first senior team appearance all in one week. And then next week, he goes back to school. <laughs> Speaking of school, uh, Stephen Fatima College are the champions of the secondary school's football league. Of course, which he played a big part in as well. What a the season he's having. Probably hopes it never ends. Of course, Kylie Aubrey, another youth talent, now plays his football at Mount Pleasant in Jamaica. Also getting ready and set uh, to perhaps come in. Well, I imagine there would be some tired legs out there for both teams, for that matter, and uh, keeping players fresh in this very hot conditions is important and I'm quite sure both coaches are aware of that and of course uh, we do this again on Sunday so certainly the energy levels have dropped a bit from a Trinidad Tobago perspective and I'm sure coach Angus Eve would want to change that by bringing in fresh fresh legs and fresh ideas and Jamaica would want to continue on the upward trajectory that they've showed so far in the second half. Uh, Ricardo King might uh, come in to replace Madame de Stretcher, Gart Stewart. Looks like his afternoon might be over. 
King looks set to come in. Certainly had a decent showing so far. Stewart. Richard King set to replace him. Well, as you were, as the action continues. Just about 16 and a half minutes is all that's left in this contest. One change for the Soka Warriors, and I thought Jamaicans looking to change the score line, but Trimingham was well positioned. Dallin to Bigo will next be in action after this round of matches against Canada. One off plane for the Copa America looking to secure their spot. Jamaica, they've got that big matchup against the US Nations League semi final. And well, might just see the first yellow card of the match. You want a good bit of football there by Gibson. Paid the price for it though. Collected it here. Look at that nifty angling saying to him. Good work, friend, but uh, you're not going anywhere. To Sean Anglin, the first yellow card of the match. Well, yeah, he is now. Certainly want to go into record books or something more positive as he gets them moving forward. Campbell. Well, it's done well, Campbell. But still going. Well, the old abracadabra. But no magic in the end as it's easy in the end for Christopher Bigger to, well, but he just gives it up. Dixon needed a more decisive touch, wasn't there? And Kyle Thomas will come away with it. Well, the fluency in this match has certainly gone out the door the last few minutes. But more physical than anything. Chevronez Hamilton. Obiku. As Moos. Harvey was the intended target. Didn't quite get to him. Devontae Campbell. Anglin. Finding more space now. And in behind. McCalla and Dixon. Well, thought it had 2 0 written all over it, but there was a deflection and they will have to settle for a corner. He's been dangerous, Dixon. Yeah. And certainly looks the most likely to score out of the 22 players on the pitch right now. Again, good bit of play by J the Jamaicans. Ball is cut back at top. Clever run. By Dixon, really wasn't far off with that effort. Might have a second bite at the cherry. Well, that came across the face, and Chevronez Hamilton was the only one there to greet it.
And a hefty tackle from Kyle Thomas shows that the path of Devontae Campbell ended exactly where it did. Trinidad and Tobago looks set to make three changes. Jamal Jack, Kylie Overy, and Michael Shaves among those set to come in. Well, certainly had a good look. Couldn't get the right connection. So a 19-year-old, a 17-year-old, and a 36-year-old. All set to take the pitch for Trinidad and Tobago. But in the meantime, though, moves. Try to get them back level unsuccessfully. Oh, heavy challenge there from Burns. Couldn't get away with it. Angus Eve, though, wasn't pleased by the referee's call. More changes for Jamaica. More changes for Trinidad and Tobago. Emilio Rosso. Will get his first appearance. And he will replace Anglin, Sean Anglin. And Shamor Smith is the next man in. And Sule Makala will see the end of his afternoon for Trinidad and Tobago. Robert Primus, his journey is done. In comes Jamal Jack, Conquer Cup Caribbean Cup winner, Central FC. Kylie Aubrey replaces Kai Gavi, makes his debut, while the other debutant, Justin Obiku, will be replaced by the 17-year-old Michael Sheaves. Changes to the top left as Jamaica push forward. It's a heavy touch. It's taking it away from Andre Fletcher. She is, of course, and Aubrey, 17 and 19 combined. Perhaps it'll give you the age of, uh, will almost give you the age. The likes of the likes of Robert Primus and Jamal Jack. Now there'll be a stoppage. For an injury, and it's perhaps the first time he's sat down. Angus Eve, assisted by Derek King and Reno Carrington. Good time to look at our Sports Max moment, Sports Max app moment. And, well, let's see. It's this man, Dixon. Slippery feet, cool finish. Gregory Isaac would be proud. He's a cool ruler. Also, the Man who gets our sports max that moment. They love it. But 19 years old, was a 19th overall draft pick in the MLS. Of course, uh, Trinidad and Tobago's Harry Spicer was the MLS number one draft pick. Could be number two for Jamaica, though. Yeah. Oh. So they made a hash of clearing the danger and eventually give up a corner.
The pressure being piled on by the reggae boys. Spong the head. But he couldn't find a way to put them further ahead. Dixon. Not as accurate from the cranium as he was with his boot some moments ago. will try to get some more action going forward. Easy for Hibbert in the end. I think for the Jamaicans, certainly had the best of the exchanges in the second half. Likes of uh, Alex Marshall. And 19-year-old Jaheim Dixon. Dixon, of course, uh, made his name uh, being a prodigy in the Issa schoolboy football, scoring a remarkable 32 goals. Hatchick in the rural area, Issa, the Costa Cup football final as well. The guy at Clarendon College, the resounding 6-2 triumph over Glenma High. And uh, oh, it's just been replaced. We'll get a rest, but he certainly has done his job so far. Shanil Thomas is the man replacing him. While Cal Ming of the league leaders, Cavaliers, will come in. And he will replace Ricardo Thomas. certainly have managed to deepen their pool recently, the Jamaicans. It's a schoolboy football that has produced many stars for the, who's went on to the national team. Dixon, one of the latest. As he bundles over Michael Shaves, one of Trinidad and Tobago's latest. And uh, of course, our Dujon Whisper Richards. Certainly caught the eyes of many folks, including Chelsea. Doing his Issa schoolboy days. Oh, here's another 19 year old Hibbert. Burns. Shaves. Kaim Thomas. And Hibbert is there. Oh, game. Increasingly becoming stretched now. Jamaicans looking to exploit. Kutri. Rousseau. Well, has he found a way through here? Jason Wright tried to muscle his way through. Couldn't get past Trimingham. Thomas. Heavy touch and... Uh, Possession, kept it back to the Jamaicans. Well, the clock ticking down at the moment. The reggae boys 
looks set to take a 1-0 victory in Port of Spain unless Soko Warriors can respond and they are responding to Kylie Aubrey. Oh, what a run that was. Certainly took Kyle Ming for a sprint. Never won a sprint with Jamaicans. Always seem to win those battles. Moose. Well, this is flicked on. Dangerous area. Thomas trying to keep it alive and, uh, well, just ran out of real estate in the end. by Jack. Cunningham. And uh, Randall Gibson. So an immovable force until he was moved. Just sense it's now or never for the Soka Warriors. Just seem to lack the fluency of play through the middle. Of course, no Alvin Jones. He's remained on the bench. Playing market as well on news today. Michelle Poonan Angeron and Kevin Goddard. All not utilized by Angus Eve today. Twenty two seconds remains of the ninety minutes. Four minutes says what will be added to that, so still time remaining, perhaps at the Reggae boys to add more insult to injury. Soka Warriors to somehow find an equalizer in this match. Certainly got the resources to do it. Thomas. He's got shields ahead of him. Oh, Shields made a delicious run ahead forward. It's looking for Thomas to release that one. Never came. Shaves Ken trying to run in behind, couldn't pick him out that time. Whoa, how about that from Christopher Bigot? Of course, the younger brother, former national senior team goalkeeper, Cleon John. Well, the fog space in, and they could be in behind Devontae Campbell to make it two. Oh, what a stop that was from Bigot. Needed to be big. He was. World class save there by the defense force custodian. Had to get down low quickly, and he did do that. Again, being able to get past Burns, Campbell there, and bearing down on Bigot's goal. That is a fine save by Bigot and goal. Easy could have made it 2-0. Instead, Bigot uh, makes it 1. Hey, 
Well, they're calling for a change for Liam Burns and uh, might just get a sight of Alvin Jones for the remaining one and a half minutes. Alvin Jones, of course, famous for the goal that knocked the US out of World Cup contention several years ago. Younger brother of uh, Seattle Saunders, or former Seattle Saunders midfielder, Jovin Jones. Come again. Jones gets his first bit of action. It's a defensive motion. Inside the final minute of what was gifted to us. Spoons completing his debut. Heimer Halgimson. Undoubtedly will be the happy of the coaches at the end of 90 minutes. Of course, this contest used by both teams to have a look at players who will be added to the squads for their various competitions. And 90 minutes is over. And uh, the Jamaicans hold a one-up advantage on the Soka Warriors. And it's a goal by Jaheem Dixon, the 19-year-old former schoolboy that separates them at the end of 90 minutes. A happy outing in Port of Spain for the reggae boys. Disappointing showing from the home team, Soko Warriors, here at the Hazley Crawford Stadium because at full time, Jamaica lead by one goal to nil. Of course, these teams will meet again on Sunday in a second friendly international that will take place at the Larry Gorman Stadium. Of course, that match will be open to fans. This match, of course, uh, was a closed door encounter, so to speak, with preparations happening here at the Hazley Crawford Stadium for the Carifta Games Trials, which takes place tomorrow. All right, enough of that. Let's look back at the 90 minutes and see some of the moments that made it all so special. Started with the pleasantries. And then the new faces, new blood being added for both these teams. Several players making debut, including that man to your right, Chevroness Hamilton. Cam Thomas was the first to get the ball rolling, so to speak. And our goalkeeper, Foster doing enough to lift it over the top. Later on, it was the man making his debut, Justin Abikwu. Just missing the mark, the top corner. And then Kaim Thomas and Rondell Gibson threatened from set pieces. Remain goal, that's at half time. Second half, we'll see the Soko Warriors run flat. But guess who didn't? Reggae boys and Dixon finding a way past Adrian Fonset in goal. The 19-year-old former Clarendon man getting a goal for the Jamaica senior team. Much mentioned of Dixon as a future talent. Showing he's got all these skill sets and, uh, well, they certainly enjoyed it. And it was the Jamaicans who continued to threaten Dixon again. Finding a way in behind, this time only finding the side netting. And at the close, perhaps one of the best chances of the match fell to Devonte Campbell. But the goalkeeper, Christopher Bigot, well, he was a big man in goal. One goal good enough for the reggae boys as they win this fixture by one goal to nil. All right, we're a numbers team, and we look at the numbers, and Jamaica 
overturning the first half advantage in terms of shots. They lead in the shots category. Shots on target, well, that went to them as well. Well, very physical game. 19 fouls in total. 11 going to the Reggae boys. And the saves for Trinidad and Tobago. Making the majority of saves. 1-0 though to Jamaica. And that was enough for them to hold the advantage. Brent Sancho is standing by with Coach Angus Eve. Coach, uh, yes, results-wise disappointing. But uh, your assessment of the 90 minutes plus? I wasn't disappointed at all, actually. We had a lot of players out there who playing at this level for the very, very first time. And I thought that they acquitted themselves very well. We were in the game for the most part. And uh, we gave away a sloppy goal. And uh, that's, that's the difference in the game. Well, you have been uh, echoing sentiments for quite a long time about these sorts of games for uh, our local players. What do you hope to achieve this weekend with the two friendlies uh, that has been well, cut? Well, uh, to give people exposure, I realize we made minimum amount of changes because we wanted to expose the guys as much as possible. Young Burns and these guys would have never played at this level before. So this is a good exercise for them to understand the pace of the game going forward and then to give the guys who are more established a run out in going into the um, playoff tournament. Well, not uh, necessarily moving away from the, the team aspect of the game. Rondell Gibson, his performance today, your thoughts? Yeah, um, he was good on the ball. When he came on, we started to believe a little bit more. Um, he, he is not afraid to get on the ball. That's the type of players that we are looking for, um, to be that brave and, and show themselves. And I think he, was, he definitely changed the game when he came on. Well, Coach, uh, all the best in the next fixture on Sunday. And, of course, uh, with that all-important game against Canada. Thanks, bro. Thanks, Angus. I've now... Uh, Join uh, Coach, uh, I know, uh, Coach Gordon, you, results in these sorts of situations not really matter. You had a record 13 debutants here today, this afternoon. One, Sean in particular, in young uh, Dixon, of course, a young man from Clarendon College. Your assessment and his performance first. Um, first of all, you know, um, games like this are always tough. Been against Trinidad, you know, our friendly neighbors. But <laughs> football-wise, you know, we're going we're to battle on the pitch. Um, I think it was a good game. Um, both teams, I think, needed the same objective, you know, expose these boys as much as possible. And I think we got that. As you look forward to the second fixture on Sunday, uh, what do you hope to get out of the, this weekend? I'm just uh, keep exposing the guys. Um, when you see a person like Kaim on his debut score goal, that's, that's amazing. That's, that's the type of things we want. Um, the transition from schoolboy football into international football. And I think he acquitted himself well. 13 changes. Um, Young Jaden in the goal also, 17 years old, so it was very good for us. And we talk about, uh, and drilling down into the game itself, uh, really came to life in the second half. What was that at halftime? Um, it's just to tell the guys to, to, to stay at the front foot. Um, I think the latter part of the first half, we kind of back off a bit and gave Trinidad some space to play. Um, it's not our style, so we wanted to be on the front foot. We um, made some adjustment, made some changes, and, and it worked for us. Thank you very much, Coach, and all the best on Sunday. And, of course, uh, all the best on an all-important uh, CONCACAF tie yeah, man, against uh, USA. Thank you, sir. Well, what a matchup. 1-0, the final score. Jamaica, Trinidad, and Tobago. Both coaches speaking to the benefits of the exposure that the young players got. I mean, what, what does this mean for football in our region? Yeah, it's something that is definitely missing when you look at the, the national teams and across the region, not being able to play these kind of friendlies it, because we saw some of the players that both play in the JPL and in the TTPFL yeah. being able to play this international. When you know the mistake, you learn from it. These sorts of games, Angus talk about uh, leaving them in for that 90 minute period so they can get a full international game. This exercise, forget the score, the yeah. exercise is extremely important for the development of both players. You talk about the young personnel that has been on show here this yeah. afternoon on both camps. It's exceptional, it's great for the game, and it was good to see. And even from the secondary schools football level to be in the national level as well. Really impressive. James, your thoughts? Yeah, I agree with Brent and I, I agree with Coach Angus as well on exercise uh, where the score doesn't matter. You know, it's, it's just an opportunity to give players who necessarily would not have been exposed to this level of football a run out. How well they acquitted themselves, well, that's up to them. Yeah. But I think more games like these are necessary, particularly for Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica to play against each other regularly. They have been undoubtedly the two best teams in the Caribbean and the highest level of football as well. Well, we look forward to Sunday where we 
we're actually going to have fans, so we encourage all the fans to come out and support your favorite, whether it's Trinidad and Tobago or Jamaica. But let's talk about Sunday. What would either coach want to do moving into that matchup? Well, I think uh, both coaches would arguably feel their stronger lineup when you see the likes, of course, of Alvin Jones and Dwayne Mockett not starting, uh, and of course, some um, Karen Ming and others for Jamaica not starting it would suggest that the stronger lineup have been not utilized here today. So expect to see, it, of course, a, a crowd that may be partisan for the Trinidad Tobago may up the tempo of the game yeah. and have a little bit more bite into it. Uh, and I think from that aspect of it, you may see uh, a little bit higher tempo of football at the Larry Gomes Stadium. Well, James, you've been to all of the matches and you've seen the impact fans can have. Do you think the fans will have an impact on the game Sunday? Yeah, most definitely. And it's a, it's a week that we saw record crowds coming out to watch the under-20 team play. And then we've got the senior team in action. I think it, it, it just augurs well for football here in the Caribbean, where they can see high-quality matches, top international teams coming. Never mind that many of the Jamaica players uh, are locally-based players. Many yeah. people follow the JPL right here in Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, yes. It's a good quality of football. And I expect that the fans will come out and make it you know, the occasion that, it, that we expect. Well, whether it's TTPFL or JPL, you can get all the action on the Sports Max app. This is where we wrap it up here at the Hazley Crawford Stadium. Join us on Sunday, Sunday, 3rd March, Trinidad and Tobago versus Jamaica. Another matchup. We head to the Larry Gomes Stadium. Join us for the action live in the stadium or live right here on Sports Max. On behalf of the entire team, thank you for watching. Final score today Jamaica 1, Trinidad and Tobago 0.